Great people with great ideas results in amazing things. And uh, if that statement doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will because that came from 1552 and they said it, now I'm saying it. So that pretty much means that like it's two people have said it and I think that that makes it like a, a quote which you could use now for any sort of thesis statement for college. Maybe you could put it on your kitchen wall in the cursive, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's what you do, right? But anyway, when it comes down to relationships, usually with businesses, it comes together because two people are like, yo, let's do something. So like, I don't know, if we use humble beginnings of Apple, right? So a quick rundown, Steve Jobs was a guy, pretty much a computer genius, and yet Steve Wozniak, they pretty much combined forces in 1976 to create the beginnings of Apple. But if Steve Jobs didn't have Mr. Wozniak, you probably wouldn't have ended up seeing that little Apple logo in the front of everybody's very, very uh, nice mocha Starbucks lattes and things like that. It just wouldn't be who it is today. Without two people coming together, you wouldn't have the iPhone, you wouldn't have the iPod, you'd still be flipping that Nokia bad boy out. Samsung would still be going strong for like the 12 of us that like Samsung. Which is, which is good, but it's just not great. When you look at other partnerships throughout the world, you'll always know that there is one person that's usually at the helm, and then there's always a secondary person that helped make those things happen. You can take a look at any major entrepreneur right now, like Elon Musk, and it'd be the same exact story. Now, most of us know him as that meme threatening, flame throwing, having Tesla guy that somehow is super popular, but apparently the company doesn't make a whole ton of money. It's a very weird, relationship, but Elon Musk is a great person with a small team behind him that made the first iterations of Tesla and turned it into what it is today. Without that team, it just simply wouldn't be possible. Now, the same thing can be said for wheel companies. If you look way back in the day, a lot of wheel companies all joined forces to essentially make what would become the aftermarket wheel community. Taking it back to the 50s in Japan, there really wasn't a whole lot of demand. It resulted in a lot of people having to come together to join forces to do what they wanted to do in the world. But that's just it. Companies like Apple and Tesla and whatever it is that you wanna kinda of come together, even if you look at our own companies or your own companies, it started with great people coming together with great ideas to make amazing things happen. And this is where it really comes to Fruition, word of the day. Fruition. Hold on. Pause the video. What does fruition mean? Fruition, the point at which a plan or project is realized. All right, back to the video. With a company like 1552, which is the automotive tuning world. Now, you probably have heard of it because diehard fans of Fitment Industries way back in the day, which we love you by the way, might recall a video that we did about a year ago on the history of 1552. I was outside, it was beautiful, it was like the first sunny day of the year. I had less hair on my head than I do now and it was definitely not as poofy, but it was still a, like probably, uh, probably one of my favorite videos because it had a ton of really cool history. It's time to talk about a wheel brand that you guys have requested. 1552. But 1552 is a perfect example of great people plus great ideas coming together to make something a little bit different. Essentially with this case, it was great wheels that perfectly blend function and form because function is use and form is looks. And if you looked at 1552, they actually do pretty, they do both pretty, pretty well. And I'll give you a couple examples as to why they get to claim that mantle. See, it all started with two gentlemen who go by the names of Matt Crook and Randy. Now Matt and Randy are very, very experienced in the wheel industry. So naturally the 1552 wheels cater to the performance enthusiast, but they also wanted to make sure that it had some looks in mind. Because I don't know if you've actually seen just strictly functional wheels, but they're actually not that beautiful to look at, especially back in the day. Randy worked for other big truck and wheel companies before 1552. And Matt and Randy were actually pretty super close, super duper, fingers crossed, pinky swear friends. I mean, they stumbled across each other basically just working in the industry. Sort of like Steve Jobs. Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Look at that. We're bringing it back to the beginning of the video. Oh my God! Wow! Full circle. So eventually they decided to combine forces and started 1552 wheels, which began in the Porsche VW and Euro market. The brand was originally launched by the former director of Porsche Motorsports North America, Joe Hoppen. Now today you can find them on everything, including Ford Focuses and Fiestas, not just Porsche parts and cars and wheels and things like that. Now, here's the thing with 1552 is because they have a lot of interesting stories. If you go out to their website, you can see that they're partnered with a lot of different awesome names, things like Hoonigan, things like uh, Jim Connor guy, what's his name, Ken Block. You have Magnus Walker and everything in between, which they all start 
with a really good story. So let's give it a good example of Magnus Walker, which is the old 911 guy. You have to know who Magnus Walker is. He's pretty much reminds you of that cool rock star looking guy who would always manage to like have the girl that you had a crush on liking him because he just has that weird thing about him. I don't really know what it is, but now I'm not speaking from experience because that'd just be really weird, but Magnus Walker is a name that is immensely popular in the Porsche scene and especially in the aftermarket automotive scene of SoCal and California as a whole. Now, don't get me wrong, Magnus Walker is super cool, rock star looks, millionaire and bad Porsche collection, but 1552 and Magnus didn't meet because of a business convention. They didn't necessarily meet because their agent told them to. They met because Magnus was cruising around the streets of where Matt and a couple of the 1552 guys were and just blaring his 911 up and down the street. So what ended up happening is the 1552 guys just jumped in a car and tried to go find this guy that was cruising around in his 911 and ended up stopping him to be able to talk to him about his 911. That 911 was Magnus Walker's 911. And after a few conversations, they pretty much just started to talk and become friends. That's really all it was. It wasn't a business proposition. It was just like, hey, you do cool car shit, and we do cool car shit too. So what ended up happening is they ended up doing some business together until finally Magnus was like, what if we made an old school Porsche wheel and we could, uh, we could do something with it? And they're like, yeah. The relationship led to Magnus specific wheels being born. It was great news for new and old school Porsches because it came out with the 52 Outlaw wheels. And it all started just because of the fact that they wanted to meet a guy that was, well, driving a fast car around on a street road. I don't know what to tell you. But that wasn't their only great idea because they still have the relationship with the person that a lot of people know and love, Ken Block, the Gymkhana guy, the dude that jumps things over things. The guy that like, you just wonder, how many takes did it take for him to do what he did? But the partnership actually happened naturally because Matt and Randy were good friends with Brian Scotto, who was the chief creative officer at Hoonigan. And he knew Ken Block. And so Ken was looking for wheels to run because a lot of the stuff that they were using at the time were breaking. And I, I'm, we're not gonna toss out names, but it was some pretty high-end wheels that ended up breaking because Ken's driving couldn't keep up with the wheels that were put on the car. So Brian ended up doing the whole presentation of the 1552 brand to Ken, and Ken actually loved the look of the wheels and he wanted them on his car. Ended up running the Tarmax and the rest you would say is history. But a lot of that actually just came from the fact of connections and friends. It was just the idea of bringing people together to come up with a really cool idea. And now if you look at Ken Block in the Jim Connor series, you always see the 1552 wheels everywhere. Whether you look at Magnus Walker and some of his inspiration into 1552, you will find that there is a touch of Magnus Walker in all of those designed wheels. You can see it with almost every single person that 1552 partners with for no other reason than the fact that they partnered with them because they're a cool car guy and a lot of them have great ideas and 1552 is one of those brands, probably one of the few brands that I would say still stays true to its actual roots of building things and being a part of the community to real enthusiasts, people that actually want to do something and actually care about what it is that they're producing. Now, we're not paying to say that because to be honest you know the 1552 isn't a brand that we talk a whole hell of a lot of but it's always great to hear these stories because everybody loves a good story and if you go out to 1552 and you see how many companies and people that they're partnered with you would actually probably ask yourself a few questions as well as to how any of those happen and then actually I'll just start it out with the same thing good people with good ideas can make some truly incredible things happen. And 1552 is a curator of making those opportunities happen. So it's exciting to see what they're up to this year and you'll probably see them come up with a whole bunch of new stuff going into 2019 and 2020. If you have questions for 1552, drop them below and we will ask them ourselves because why not? Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. You're watching Fitman Industries. Don't forget to subscribe. Wheels, tire, suspense, Fitman Industries at home. Whew. And we have a second channel that we'll be doing our wheel reviews, turntables, garage stuff, technical videos. If you're a fan of all the technical stuff, we're gonna be making a second channel because we don't want to bombard your feed with other types of videos. And so we have this sort of stuff, which is the super engaging stuff, which if you're not subscribed, look at the cool stuff you're missing out on. And then you also have the technical stuff, the stuff about the wheels, the tires, matchups, things like that. So if you're interested in subscribing to our other channel, you can do so below. The link is in the description. And of course, we'll probably put it somewhere up on the screen. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We will see you guys later. Thank you so much and peace.